Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the Christocentric Meal, a daily reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Abel Damina is my name and I'm excited to welcome every one of you to this wonderful broadcast this morning. And invite a friend, a family member as we look into the perfect word of God. Let's pray together. Father, I declare that for viewers around the world, light shines in the dark places of their minds. Your people equipped, edified. Jesus made manifest the revelation of God's word growing big in the heart of our viewers around the world. And we rejoice because of the perfection that they receive through the teaching of the word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are looking at healing is yours, part 11. Healing is yours. Jesus is the word of God in the four gospels. He is the word incarnate. The word became flesh. He evidenced the father's nature. He was manifesting him. He wasn't speaking for God. He was God speaking to us. He wasn't speaking for God. Jesus was God speaking to us. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God himself. In verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as of the only begotten son, full of grace and truth. He is the father manifest. Jesus is the Father manifest. In John 14, 9, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? He had a healing ministry. It was a fault of his mission on earth. His compassion for the sick was unprecedented. He never refused anyone healing. That's instructive. There was never a time where anybody met Jesus with sickness and Jesus said, no, I cannot heal you. Or you have not done one, two, three, four. He healed all without a condition. And it's the same yesterday, today and forever. Today he's healing all without a condition. Get rid of that mental block. You are a candidate for God's healing, irrespective of your situation and the reasons behind it. You are a candidate of the healing power of Jesus Christ. Now let's look at Jesus' healing ministry in Matthew 4, 24. So the report of him spread throughout all Syria and they brought him all who were sick, those afflicted with various diseases and torments, those under the power of demons and epileptics and paralyzed people and he healed them. He healed them. Jesus healed without discrimination. Look at the classes of sicknesses he healed. Epilepsy, demons, paralyzed people, those that were sick, afflicted with various diseases, he healed all of them. In Matthew 8, 14 and 15. And when Jesus went into Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law laying ill with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she got up and began waiting on him. He healed Peter's mother-in-law of fever. Matthew 8, 16 and 17. When evening came, they brought to him many who were under the power of demons. And he drove out the spirit to the world and restored to health all who are sick. And thus he fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He himself took in order to carry away our weaknesses and infirmities and bore away our sicknesses and diseases. He restored to health all, capital letters, A-L-L, -L, who were sick to fulfill prophecy. Look at Matthew 9.35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news, the gospel of the kingdom and curing all kind of disease and every weakness and infirmity. His teaching ministry always had a healing ministry. Again, his teaching ministry always had a healing ministry. The ministry of Jesus is the healing ministry. He taught and healed. He taught and healed. And today, when we teach, he heals through us. He was teaching and the power was present to heal everybody. As I'm teaching, the power of God is present right now where you are to heal you today. And as you also go forth to minister to the sick, the power is also present. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. And Jesus summoned to his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure all kinds of disease and all kinds of weakness and infirmity. Verse 8. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, Drive out demons freely without pay you have received, freely without charge give, freely without pay you have received, 
freely without charge give. He goes further to give his disciples the same authority. A disciple is a student. They were learning healing. A disciple of Jesus is a student of the healing ministry. Amen. He healed everybody. And he gave his disciples power to go and do the same. Because he wants to heal everybody. Sickness is not of God. Healing is the will of God for you today. Join me in the confession today. I am a student of the healing ministry of Jesus. I choose not to refuse anyone healing just like Jesus. I choose not to refuse anyone healing just like Jesus. In my teaching ministry, I heal the sick. Say it again. In my teaching ministry, I heal the sick. Praise the Lord. As you teach God's word, ensure you demonstrate your authority to heal anyone that is sick. Make sure you do that today. Demonstrate your authority as you teach the word of God. Let's pray. Father, I pray for viewers today that, Lord, you will through them demonstrate your power and your glory through the gospel in bringing healing, in bringing restoration to the sick and manifesting your glory. We decree right now that your people are equipped, empowered, and strengthened. They are bold to go forth making manifest of the savor of your grace, healing the sick, raising disciples and building men for the kingdom. And we command sicknesses and diseases and demons to bow their knees to the Lordship of Jesus and you sit and get your hands off my viewer today. Sick body be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your tangible healing power that is at work in the life of my viewers around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I want to encourage you to order for the Christocentric meal. Hard copy of this book from our office. The announcer will tell you how to get it. And the e-copies from Amazon. You can get it at Dr. Abel Damina on Amazon. It's a joy to bring you the word of God. And I want to encourage you to keep coming. Bring more people to be part of what God is doing here. But it's an honor to serve you the grace of God through the teaching of God's word. Tell friends and loved ones about the broadcast. Looking forward to connect with all of you again tomorrow. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ and remember that the kingdom of God is in power. Amen. Glory! 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 The entire world will be swallowed by the message of Christ. In our lifetime, fraud stars will be afraid of the pulpit. In our lifetime, legalism will be afraid of the pulpit. In our lifetime, if you don't preach Christ, nobody will hear your voice. In our lifetime, nobody will abuse the Bible. In our lifetime, Matoka Labatanaga. From nation to nation, from coast to coast, from continent to continent, from the mountain to the valley, nations will bow to this message. They will bow to this message. They will bow to this message. Atlanta, get ready. United States of America, get ready. This is forever. It's happening here live. Abel Damina Ministries, also known as Power City International, United States of America presents Homecoming Conference 2019. Theme, The Revelation of Jesus. Ministering, Dr. Abel Damina. Date, 22nd to 24th November 2019. Time, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. 22nd and 23rd November. 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. 24th November 2019. Vernium 2000 Convention Center, Concourse College Pack, GA 30337, Atlanta, United States of America. For inquiries and free registration, please call the following coordinators. Atlanta Coordinator 770568514 or 2312539758. New York Coordinator plus 16462418670. Maryland Coordinator 404-542-6086 Until Christ is revealed, the believer will never be known. Host, Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminar. Be there.
Luke 24 verse 44 and he said unto them these are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled pay attention to the distinction which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me so the distinction there is the law the prophets and the Psalms now we also took time to deal with the fact that Jesus called them fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. They were slow of heart to believe. Now, Isaiah 53 verse 1. Who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The word report is the Hebrew word Shemua. Shemua. Shemua means message. So there is a message of all the prophets. Our report. All right. What is similar in the mouth of the prophets? Our report. Not my report. Our report. Not who has believed us. Who has believed our report? What is similar in the mouth of the prophets? There was something Isaiah said. Something Ezekiel said. Something Jeremiah said. Something... Obadiah, something Amos, something Joel, something Nahum, something Zechariah, Zapaniah, all of them, there's something they said that agreed, synchronized. There were other things they said that didn't agree. So the report will be what they all said that agrees. That's why I called it our report. Our, all of us put together, we have a report. Who has believed our Shemua? The word Shemua means message. Our report or our message. Meaning all of us put together as the prophets of the Old Testament, even though we prophesied many different things, yet we had one thing that each of us reported that agrees. That thing that agrees, that thread that runs through the books of the prophets is called report or shemua or message. And Isaiah was asking, who has believed this message? The report. Now, what will be the message of the prophets? Isaiah 53 verse 2. For he, so the message is a person. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. The report is a he, a person. As a root out of a dry ground, he had no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Next verse. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteem him not. Next verse. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Next verse. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. So now Isaiah admits that even he and other prophets, they have gone astray. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity... Of us all. Now the word believed. The first time it appeared. Is in Genesis chapter 15 verse 6. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. Abraham believed. So for Abraham to believe. The word believe is the Hebrew word aman. Aman. Believe. To agree. So the question now will be. How did Abraham believe? Because it is not just believe. The demons believe and tremble, but they are not saved. So it's not just to believe. Like somebody says, I believe there is God. You don't even need to go to school to believe there is God. The demons believe and tremble. They believe that there is God. Even Satan believes that there is God. <laughs> even the devil believes. And he trembles. Ooh, there is God. But he's not saved. 
So for Abraham to believe God and it was counted to him for righteousness, we need to study what is that belief that Abraham believed God, the word Aman. What did Abraham believe? Because when you see the word Aman used, it's because you heard something. Not saw something, you must have heard something for you to believe. You must have heard something. Question, what did Abraham hear that made him believe? Galatians 3.8 And the scripture foreseeing that God will justify the hidden through faith. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. What did Abraham believe? Abraham believed the gospel. God preached the gospel to Abraham saying, Abraham heard God preach the gospel. And when Abraham heard God preach the gospel, Abraham believed. To believe means to receive. Believing is receiving. Abraham believed. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. They believe on his name, so they received. Believing is receiving. The word preached before is the Greek word pro eugelizomai. Abraham believed the gospel before it happened. That's why it is pro, pro. He had it before it happened. We believe the gospel of what he has done. Abraham believed the gospel of what he will do. Today, we believe the gospel of what he has done. Abraham was pro. We are post. It's been done. We believe. Abraham, believe it will be done. Romans 10, 16 to 17. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. The same word for believe. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. 17. So then, Faith by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So then, faith by hearing. Back in the days, preachers will tell us, faith comet, comet, faith comet, faith comet, it comet. So if faith comet, faith go it. It go it. It go it. Faith come it. Faith go it. I have news for you. The word comet is not in the original. So if the preacher's message is on comet and go it, he's talking nonsense. That word comet is not in the original. It was added by translators. So the original is faith by hearing. Hearing the message of Christ. Faith by hearing. What are you to hear? The message of Christ. So faith is once. Faith is once. The day you had the gospel, that day you had faith. Faith by hearing. Not comment. Now, so the day you heard was the day you got faith to be saved. And you were not instrumentally saved. You were saved with a closure. Saved. Saved. Closed. You are saved. You are not going to be saved. Mm -mm. On the last, on the last day. On the last, on the last day. 
Only true believers shall be raptured. Who are false believers? A believer is a believer. There's no true, there's no false. It's just religion trying to control you. You are saved. Say with me, I am saved. Say it very loud. Let your neighbor hear you well. Saved. So then, faith by hearing. Hearing the message of Christ. Put your finger in Romans. Come with me to Galatians chapter 3. Verse 2. This only will I learn of you. Received ye the spirit by the works of the law. Or by the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. The hearing of. The hearing of the gospel is called what? The hearing of faith. Because the gospel is called the word of faith. So then. Faith by hearing. Hearing the message. Which message of Christ? Now, Abraham had the gospel. And Abraham believed the gospel. So when the prophet said, who has believed? Believing cannot come from the law. Because the law is not of faith. Believing cannot come from condemnation. The message of condemnation does not produce faith. So believing can only come from the gospel. The gospel of what Christ will do or what Christ has done. So what were the prophets sent to preach? Remember again, we are still investigating Luke 24, 25. He said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets. We are to believe all that the prophets have spoken. All that the, so what did the prophets speak? The gospel. The, the gospel. So in the message of the prophets, what do I look for? I look for the gospel. Noah was the first prophet as referred to by the epistles. He preached Christ. He was called a preacher of righteousness. Abel was a man of faith, but he was not quoted. Abel was a man of faith, but he was not quoted because he didn't preach Christ. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He preached Christ typified by the ark. Typified by the ark. The ark, listen carefully, the ark was Noah's teaching ministry. Or the ark was Noah's mode of communication. The ark was a way of Noah communicating Christ. It was a medium of communication. The ark of Noah. It typified Christ. It was a type of Christ. Just like the brazen serpent on a pole was Moses preaching Christ typified by the serpent on a pole. So the serpent on a pole was Moses' teaching ministry. It was Moses' mode of communication. So the ark was Noah's teaching ministry on Christ. But in the Bible, the person who was first referred to as a prophet was Abraham. Abraham. But remember, what I was asking you for is who did the epistles refer to as the first prophet? Noah. But in the Bible... The first prophet was Abraham. The Hebrew word Nabi. Nabi. N-A-B-I-Y. Nabi. Prophet. Someone who preaches. 
The first role of a prophet is to preach, not to dig deep. It's not digging an oil well. To preach, to give news. And that's exactly what Noah was doing. He was giving news. Hello, I hope you have been blessed by that wonderful message. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to hear, study, and meditate on the word. You need to not only hear, but to also read and see. And that is why you need the Christocentric meal. To order this life-changing book and other titles, DVDs, and CDs by Dr. Abel Damina, call the number or email the address on the screen. This is a book that reveals to you who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. This book interprets and breaks down the word into daily meals, making it easier for you to understand and study, build up and strengthen your inner mind, all the while growing your relationship with God and your confidence as a believer.